Hello and welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church as we celebrate the Transfiguration. A warm welcome to you today. I know it's a cold weekend outside, so stay warm and be well. I want to lift up for you just a couple of announcements. Next Wednesday, of course, is Ash Wednesday, and so you may receive both communion and the, and the, uh, and the ashes. Uh, please notice also that uh, look, at, look in your mail for the Lenten student devotional. It'll be the basis for our reflections and for much of our worship on Sundays and Wednesdays during the season of Lent. You'll find that in... Um, You'll find that in your mailbox. It'll be sent to you at home just like a newsletter. And if you'd like an extra copy to send to a friend or one of your loved ones, you can pick those up out in the church narthex. You can also contact the church office. So a big thanks to our catechism students, to our confirmation students for the Lenten student devotional. It's on the great hymns of the faith. And so if you've ever wanted to sing more of your favorite hymns, that's what we'll be doing for the season of Lent. Also, please do take home your announcements page and remember in prayer all those people listed uh, on the announcements. We appreciate that very much and we know that God hears all of our prayers and responds to us in our hour of need. With that, please rise for the brief order of confession and forgiveness. We gather now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, we read in 1 John chapter 3, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful, and just, will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us silently reflect upon the sins for which we would ask forgiveness now. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for Jesus' sake, forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated and join in singing our first hymn, How Good Lord to Be Here.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, in the transfiguration of your Son, you confirm the mysteries of the faith by the witness of Moses and Elijah, and in the voice from the bright cloud declaring Jesus, your beloved Son, you foreshadowed our adoption as your children. Make us heirs with Christ of your glory and bring us to enjoy its fullness through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please rise for the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, is it good for us to be here? Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what, what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. And this they... As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man has risen. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, the one who shows us himself over and over again. Amen. So today we're going to talk about really three things. We're going to talk about signs here of the world, signs that Christ incarnate has given his disciples, and God who also gave us and gives us a sign. I don't know if, I think it was, it's been about 10 years or so since these, these people were popular but there was a blue-collar comedy series with Jeff Foxworthy and Bill Ingvall, and, and one of the popular things that I, I think it's Jeff Foxworthy used to say was, here's your sign. Anybody ever? Uh, <laughs> and that was some pretty funny stuff. And what those comedians were talking about was obvious signs and how people tell us uh, obvious things that we already know. And I can, I can say, for example, I hear that a lot when um, I first meet someone new, they say, boy, you're tall. <laughs> and I always want to say, really? Cool. I always want to be tall. You know, like, I, I, like I don't know that I'm tall, but that it, 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 it's maybe the, just a way to start a conversation. But sometimes um, I've, in my past, have wanted to say, Here's your sign, you know. But uh, I, I haven't. But we, we deal with signs all over the place. S you know, we, we hear of signs of COVID. If, when you're entering somewhere, they're asking you for, do you, you know, do you have a temperature and, and this and that and all these questions to, to find out if there's a sign that maybe you possibly might have COVID. Or signs of, you know, we, look, we know of things, signs of dehydration or signs of a heart attack. Um, whatever those things might be, there's just different signs. We also read body language signs, how people are closed off or how they look or how they move their eyes, and we make decisions off of those body language signs. And then, of course, we have traffic signs that give us the instructions of, of how to drive. And, and, and um, so we dealt with a lot of signs. Christ gave his disciples a lot of signs up to this point of transfiguration. He did all kinds of miracles. 
But Christ wanted his people to know, truly, without a doubt, who he was. And so he, he brought Peter, James, and John up to this mountain, and Christ showed his divinity. It says in Matthew, his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. Or in, uh, you know, it's, it says it in all different ways. Um, in, I believe it's in Mark, it says he became, his clothes became dazzling white. And in Luke, it says as bright as a flash of lightning. So this isn't just some shiny clothing. This is God glowing, showing his divinity, showing his, that he is God to his disciples. Now, if you didn't think that was enough, then God himself speaks from a cloud and says, this is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Christ shows himself And then God comes and backs him up and says, and speaks directly to the disciples. I mean, it's funny that they even have to point out that the disciples would be terrified. If all of a sudden the cloud opens up and God is speaking directly to me, yes, I'd be talking about should we build temples or something. I I wouldn't know what to talk about either. And Peter kind of became nervous and started saying kind of confusing things. So Christ wants to make it very clear because Christ knows his hour has come. He is nearing crucifixion at this time. God knows this as well. And so Christ wants his people to know who he is for certain. And God, I just think the verse of God saying, this is my son whom I love listen to him. It was such a powerful, powerful verse. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm not very good at listening. I have to like really concentrate to make sure I don't daydream in, you know, if I'm listening to a sermon or I'm watching a podcast or whatever, if I really want to pay attention, I have to kind of, I struggle with listening and I, I struggle with not always doing what I'm told. When, it reminds me of a time when I was a little girl. We used to go school shopping for school shoes, and I lived on the farm. And so the deal was, when you bought your school clothes, you were not able to wear those clothes until school. Did anybody have that? It had to, no, there was no, you know, it was off limits, right? That stuff was for school. Well, we had some friends come over in August after we had gotten our school clothes, and I had these beautiful yellow tennis shoes, and they were just so awesome. They they were bright and shiny, like the sun yellow. And friends came over, and I just couldn't resist. I didn't want to wear my dirty old tennis shoes when I had these pretty shiny yellow ones. And so I put on the yellow tennis shoes and went running and playing with my friends, and we were running through the back grove, and I ran across a sinkhole, which I didn't know was a sinkhole, and I sunk down deep in, I sunk down almost to my knees, and (laughs) my yellow shoes, of course, were ruined. I remember my dad, like, carrying me, he was a big guy, just carrying me under his arm, dirty shoes and all, up to the house. He never said a word to me, I think he just knew my humiliation of making my my yellow shoes dirty, but mom worked so hard on those yellow shoes. Thank you, mom. You watch all my sermons, so thank you for working so hard on my yellow shoes. But to be really honest, those yellow shoes were never the same. They just didn't shine, and they just... They kind of had a dull yellow look to them, even as hard as mom worked. And I think about this picture as this story as kind of how we are as human beings. We make a mess 
of our life. We sin, we don't listen to God's instructions. We do a bunch of stupid things that we really don't want to do, but we do them anyway. And then we try really hard to clean ourselves up. We try to do what we can do to help ourselves. But in the middle of that, we, we don't feel much better. We, 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 we don't look bright and brand new. Well, there is good news. Christ has made you bright, shiny, and new. In your waters of your baptism, Christ as says, you are brand new. Your sins are forgiven. The muck of life that we have created for ourselves, the things that we do, we screw up over and over again. Christ went to the cross, died, and was resurrection and resurrected for you, for your sin for the muck of life that you have gotten yourself in. In 2 Corinthians 5, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Thanks be to God for that. Amen.
Please rise as together we confess our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of all that God has promised to us, let us join our hearts in prayer for God's people in this place and for all in their hour of need. O Lord God, as you revealed your Son, and as his beauty and wonder was transfigured and glowed upon the mountaintop, so you promise us also that we shall be made holy and completely new by the work of your Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord, as he was transfigured on the mountaintop, let us be transfigured too to reflect his glory in this our ordinary and daily lives, that all the world might see the light of your Son, Jesus, and might know your love because of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, we ask that you let down your Holy Spirit to give new life and strength to all who struggle in any way, but especially we pray for Susan, Pat, Dieter, Sandy, and Carol. We ask that you pour out every blessing upon Margie, Ron, Naoma, Stu, and Dave, and that you stay close to the side of Marilyn, Chris, Leanne, Sharon, and Shirley. O Lord, remember all of your promises that you have made to Robert, Christy, Ken, Lily, and Walker, and give every blessing to Cade, Dylan, Moni, Chris, and all of those whom we name now in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, lead our country and all who have been seated in positions of authority and power. O Lord, lead us all to pursue justice and peace, fairness and equality. O Lord, fill us with a spirit of patience. Help us to overlook injury and to be slow to point out insults. O Lord, make us one people as you have made us one church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands then, O Lord our God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share the sign of peace with one another. Together, let us pray with one voice as our Lord Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Wiedersehen.